in this room. With me here is Markus Vogel. He's from the Johannes Kepler University. He's an expert in the areas security, privacy and programming. And today he's going to talk about the mess in mobile instant messengers. The stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Um, so, first, yeah. Uh, who am I? Uh, as he previously said, um, yeah, I was writing a bachelor thesis on this topic, uh, which is also available on my domain, ue.eu, <laughs> back.pdf, or HTML is an overview if you have trouble deciding for a specific messenger. Uh, the overview uh, lets you wait and compare uh, in some dot uh, 20 messengers. Uh, and I'm not a lawyer, so everything legal I say you should take with some doubt. And I'm also not a cryptography expert. And I'm also not paid, so I'm not making an advertisement for any of the messengers directly, as all of them have some flaws. Uh, so, uh, about instant messaging in general, uh, it's pretty much a topic since the last 20 years uh, and it's getting more and more popular after all uh, and uh, it got uh, even more hype with social media and uh, I wrote my thesis uh, at the end of September, I finished it and handed it in and just until now, so we are now in the beginning of November, uh, the news are flooding in and everything I say at the moment is probably outdated at the end of the presentation already. Uh, so please also consider this whenever I'm telling you something I can't read all the news. Uh, like for example, uh, Facebook finally got end-to-end -end encryption uh, but just for one-to-one -one messages and also uh, self-destroying messages which I will explain later. WhatsApp finally got video chat. Um, and uh, Google Allo also updated uh, to version 2.0. Uh, and this is an example how many news are incoming and this is just the trend, the Google trend for WhatsApp. So it's uh, still a rising topic. Uh, if I had known that this conference is so focused on IoT, I'd probably compare it to it. And it's probably on the same level and uh, in Google News it's something around 20 million news just concerning WhatsApp. Just so you have dimensions on how big the hype about this topic is. Uh, a short history, I mean most of you use some kind of instant messages, that's why you're here. And you probably started with ICQ, MSN or a bit later Skype, uh, probably you just got on the train with the first social networks which had some limited communication features uh, built in uh, and you defi definitely have heard about them and all the improvements in this field and moreover the flaws and what a huge mess it is uh, in the topic of some of the NSA leaks uh, which are uh, happening all the time and the first ones were at uh, 2000 in the Devon and the more famous ones were at 2013. Another scale on how big this topic is, uh, WhatsApp was sold for 19 billion dollars for a company with less than 100 employees. So now you can pretty much calculate how much a good instant messenger developer is probably worth. And probably the most scary topic uh, on that, uh, or the most scary quote uh, also concerning the whole uh, issues of instant messaging and metadata, because it was even uh, mainly about uh, this stuff, is that the uh, former director of uh, NSA and CIA, so he was in both of the agencies, uh, said uh, people are killed based on metadata. Probably not here, but probably in some more problematic countries. So it's a pretty important topic because there are literally people dying from this issue of doing it wrong. Uh, so first off, as we are in a security conference and I have limited time, I assume you have basic knowledge like what a message, what your message history is, and also what symmetric and asymmetric cryptography is. I can't give you a class on that in 30 minutes. Uh, but I slowly, uh, I 
uh, I have to repeat at least uh, the most important thing, uh, information security has uh, four major aspects, pretty much every introduction to IT security should tell you this and instant messaging is an excellent example for explaining all these things. Uh, so the first factor of information security is uh, confidentiality that no one else can read your messages and you can mostly achieve this with encryption. Encryption done right, encryption not backdoored uh, and as all cryptographers said, standard encryption don't do your own encryption. Uh, integrity is that someone uh, can't modify your encrypted messages and something at the end, cut them off. This is, for example, partially a problem in Telegram. And uh, which has also been a major problem with uh, messaging and social networks is availability, like uh, the protests in Turkey or countries near there. Uh, have been taken down uh, when uh, the government uh, thought it was necessary for national security. Uh, then the fourth point usually is uh, non-repudiation in classic information security. So you can deny you sent that email, you can deny you sent that message, which in some cases is problematic and it also doesn't exist for classic email. And there is pretty much uh, a complementary term, meaning the direct opposite, it's plausible deniability. So you can claim uh, that you didn't do that. And this is also a legal term in the USA, and if it's plausible that someone else did it, uh, you are rather on the safe side. In some cases, also uh, pseudonymity. I won't say anonymity because it's a too strong term. Uh, is an issue, especially when you're going to leak something, for example. Uh, you better have, first off, plausible deniability and also some kind of pseudonymity, as you don't want your sensible information linked to your name. And a term which uh, all the more recent uh, protocols also claim to uh, put a lot of worth in is uh, perfect forward secrecy. So just because something uh, you sent uh, 10 years ago was decrypted, it doesn't mean that something you sent now is decrypted. This is usually done uh, by session keys that are used to sign uh, keys that are just used for this current communication. So a long-term key using to encrypt a short-term key that you then throw away. So if, even if you monitor a good encryption, and you kind of find out some of my uh, encryption keys, uh, it won't help you to uh, encrypt previous encryption of me. Uh, and also really uh, popular is end-to-end -end encryption, which in our case of communication means a client to a client, as instant messaging is a uh, comparison to normal web surfing, not client-server, but client-server-client -client usually. We'll talk about the exceptions later. And End-to-end -end encryption means that the server can maximally attack your availability uh, so that he denies to forward any messages of you, but he's unable to uh, impact your confidentiality. Uh, so what data do we have in this field? Obviously uh, the transferred messages, uh, then your presence data, which is getting a bit less popular now that you have a I'm online, I'm busy, or I'm away. This was more popular in, for example, MSN. Um, also, your message history is a different thing to your transferred messages as it's stored on your device. Uh, and uh, if you store your messages, you can have the best encryption in the world. If someone steals your stored messages, it's all worthless. Uh, also, your login and profile <coughs> data is data in instant messaging, if you use the same credentials or the same password everywhere, that's even problematic information. And also your contact list is uh, also giving away a lot of your identity. Uh, this data is kind of unavoidable when you, uh, or this data is uh, entered by you, so it's direct data, as I'd call it in comparison to metadata. Metadata, I would uh, say, is data that 
you unintentionally and unavoidably produce. So you pretty much can't do a lot against metadata. For example, which IP you have, which port you use, uh, the size of your packets. Uh, you can't really change that a lot. I mean, you can change the packet size with padding, but if you send 100 megabytes, you can't deny that you just send 100 megabytes. Uh, also, a lot of messengers have uh, received and read uh, data that without modifying your endpoint client you can't really avoid and it gives a lot of information away. Uh, also, even if you don't disclose it to your conversation partners, you always disclose your, disclose your connection times. So every instant messaging service you use knows when you're up, when your device is in energy saving mode and contacting it very rarely or when it's contacting it very often when you're using your phone. Uh, also, if you send it unencrypted or badly encrypted, uh, your multimedia metadata, some images contain your camera, even your location sometimes, or the device model which could uh, give away some exploit options and uh, if they can decrypt your data, you also have a lot of uh, metadata in your text, like if you're typing in Austrian accent, you're probably from Austria. <laughs> uh, if you're typing really fast, you're probably some kind of computer guy, or if you have 10 keystrokes a second, uh, or you have 10 keystrokes a minute, you're probably not a computer guy. Um, so, uh, I'll just go shortly over this, as I kind of see it partially solved. Uh, modern Android systems have mechanisms built in to at least uh, notify you when an app wants some notification, wants to access your data, because early versions of Android and, for example, Facebook Messenger just per default and always send your location, which led to some <coughs> funny moments with some friends, like, I'm just on my way, dude, you're here, I see it in your GPS location. Stuff like that. Also, uh, don't link your accounts, probably don't use the same email address for everything and probably use some kind of proxy uh, if it's somewhat sensible uh, communication. Uh, then uh, I'll give you the ABC of possible attacks. Uh, so your worst enemy is even ordered by uh, how often this is the cause of an attack kind of. Uh, it's usually not a sophisticated hacker with a computer security science something degree. Uh, it's usually using bad defaults, uh, like using Telegram, just typing on the contact, texting unencrypted, or uh, by accident using email and forgetting to PGP encrypt and everything. Uh, so the major cause uh, that the NSA is still active with uh, pretty much no effort is that people are still uh, having bad default, having bad habits on information security uh, that they simply don't know. You can't ask normal non-security people to know all this stuff. Uh, then even if uh, you have good security, it's pretty useless if the other person doesn't. So if uh, another person loses the device and you send them some pictures of you, uh, well, the guy who found it now has your pictures. Well done. So you probably also consider that. A lot of people get huge phones and they just can't keep their phone in their pocket. So try it out. You go to a bar and you can just take the phone of your friends and read through everything. This is the most realistic security breach. Uh, most people don't have PIN codes or it's the L or it's 1234 or 2580. So most people have really bad physical security and if you're sophisticated you can also use a USB cable from your phone to another phone and debug the other phone and pretty much make a backup from some other phone on your phone because the Android debug bridge is also working on Android. Uh, the next risk is uh, pretty much the developer of your apps and the vendor. If your developer is unable to keep his private signature keys and his Google Play Store login private, uh, some attacker could just steal it and 
push a modified app to the store and now all the 5 million people using it and who have probably granted all the permissions to the app uh, now have a malicious app on their phone that has some background threat doing bad things. Uh, we even uh, had also a talk on the second issue in that topic that uh, some devices are already shipped with malware, especially Chinese devices but also more nameably devices. Uh, so the automatic update is somewhat a problem and also the software shipped with your phone or uh, also uh, third party apps uh, are somewhat an issue. Uh, then the classic attack is uh, a guy with some security knowledge eavesdropping on you in the same network doing classic attacks. Uh, then also somewhat problematic as most of your communication is now stored somewhere in the USA probably uh, is that even though now you can decrypt your stuff you probably can decrypt it in the future uh, I mean, we don't know what cryptographers come up in the future. There is the risk of quantum computers making pretty much all asynchronous cryptography uh, pretty easy to break. Then uh, after that probably is a classic government thing that's most hype. Even though I don't think it's that much of a problem when you're using services hosted in the U and you are in the U. Because it's not that bad uh, to some extent. Also, uh, the host of your server doesn't have to be the service provider of whatever service you are using. For example, Signal, Signal the Secure Messenger, is hosted on Amazon Web Services. Uh, and depending on where the host of the server or the service provider is, there is some legal and technical probabilities and chances of accessing that and uh, some uh, attackers have these chances. Uh, then how can you uh, mitigate it? Uh, if you're making a messenger and you shouldn't, we currently have uh, four or eight or six digit um, codes when you get the SMS sent to you for the messengers working on mobile numbers you with a 1 to 10,000 chance can guess a four digit number for example a better way would be to use some kind of cross authentication like open authentication or multimodal login or probably even in the future biometrics as phones are slowly getting uh, fingerprint sensors or iris scanners even though that has to be done right because if you lose your biometrics, you lost them forever. Uh, also, uh, mobile networks uh, are pretty much a risk overall. There was also a talk uh, in the, on the other side with the radios that pretty much even LTE, the most modern one, is to some extent already broken. Uh, then the chat history feature that you love and you can go through all your old messages from a year ago is pretty much an issue because if your phone is stolen all the chat history you ever had uh, is lost and a lot of messengers in the last month implemented a feature like this um, and now I'll uh, go through some messengers I'll uh, skip the closed ones as we're limited in time uh, so the best case is you're using an open source and open protocol implementation for example, the most popular and uh, its longest around is uh, XMPP with chat security and conversations on Android and it's probably the only real federated solution so you can host your own server uh, but it's a huge mess in terms of implementing it uh, because it's, as the name says, based on extensions and there are literally 10 RFCs you would have to read to uh, just implement this even though uh, two of them are already outdated and the two you have, the most important one has 200 pages and all of them have nearly 700 pages and with that you can just unencrypted one-to-one -one communicate, nothing else so it's as bad as email pretty much just faster. Uh, and there are 380 uh, extensions 
uh, but none of them manage to give you what uh, Signal, for example, gives you multi-party end-to-end encryption. Uh, so a group chat isn't possible at the moment uh, with that. And uh, you never can rely that the other party also has your extensions. Some are client, some are server-sided, and some are both. Uh, and this pretty much exposes the feature of a nearly 15-year protocol that security isn't a feature you can tag on, as you probably have heard in some other talks. And also the multimedia capabilities are from the early age of what uh, has been uh, from the early XMPP age. Uh, so the most users somewhat, I don't even understand why, is a Telegram. It's bound to your phone number. It's insecure by default, which is horrible for normal users, as they will do it wrong. Uh, and you can't even do encrypted group chats, which for me is a pretty usual feature I want to have in a secure way. And they did their own cryptography and they did their own protocol. They specified it, but that's the two things every crypto person tells you uh, you shouldn't do. Uh, for example, they aren't even using TLS, they are using RSA and they are hard pinning an RSA key. Uh, and uh, in the previously mentioned paper I wrote, uh, you can also see that uh, the implementation doesn't match the uh, documentation and also some very minor flaws. So it's not fully broken, you're kind of secure, but in my opinion you shouldn't really use it. So uh, the second option uh, that got pretty much hype in the last time and the one you know is Signal. An option to that is Wire. Uh, it's uh, using Exolotl protocol, uh, which has been renamed 15 times. It probably has another name now. Uh, and uh, to simplify this a lot, uh, it's pretty much storing the first step of your Diffie-Hellman key exchange on the server and the other person can then just uh, use this to uh, already uh, make a key, to exchange a key with you, uh, and this is then sent to you, and you also store them offline on your device. So it's pretty much an extension to off-the-record messaging used in XMPP that now allows offline messages. Uh, also, uh, there are some issues with uh, the Signal app, uh, that it's also just bound to your phone number um, and the voice is just one-to-one -one, so you can use it like Skype and it's hosted in the USA, it's legally in the USA and it's hosted on Amazon Web Services and it's using Google Cloud Messaging so every time you get a message Google knows that. And there is liberal signal that avoids this but uh, the main guy from Signal denied that Libre Signal guys can use his Signal server. So you can also only make your own Libre Signal server incompatible with uh, normal uh, Signal. Uh, but the good side is that they are pretty much the only ones in this field open sourcing the server. Uh, Wire is also uh, pretty popular. Uh, as you can use, uh, or it's a pretty nice alternative, as you can also use your email and password. And it supports some other features and it's uh, legally and in many ways in Europe, which is to some extent uh, better in my opinion. And the uh, bad side of that is that the servers are closed source, so you can't for sure know what the servers do. Uh, then uh, a pretty nice alternative is uh, Tox or Ring, it's both pretty much the same idea of being fully decentralized, not federated, so everyone uh, is a server in that extent uh, that uh, you really contact them by their IP and uh, the issue is that you can send them offline messengers uh, it has bad mobile capabilities as you, as you have to keep a real TCP connection to every of your contacts. Uh, and if your account files are lost, your account is lost as there is no centralized server storing uh, your data. Tox is more popular and it's uh, longer ongoing, so I would recommend Tox. 
but you should totally look into these. Ricochet is a very similar thing, uh, but in instead of uh, setting uh, their cards on a distributed hash table, it's setting the cards on the Tor Onion name server. So you're opening a hidden service with Tor Onion, and people can then contact you, and it's all in the Tor network. Uh, but currently, the client is for the PC only, and it only supports textual one-to-one -one chat. So it has very limited features. Uh, so now we are going to the second kind, uh, closed protocol, so you don't know what it's transferring, uh, closed source, so you don't know what it's doing, but you can see what it's transferring. Uh, the most popular with the most users is Facebook Messengers, using uh, an M2M protocol, it's bound to your Facebook account, and uh, it's insecure by default, uh, but it just got end-to-end -end encryption, but no one audited it. And not that many details are known. A bit better, but also owned by the same company, is WhatsApp. It's a fully setting on Signal protocol, so to some extent it's as good as Signal if it were closed source. Um, yeah, and uh, the problem is that your history is backed up to a server. Uh, and uh, now I have to skip a bit because I'm already over time, so I'm now skipping through the others. Uh, Snapchat, pretty much unencrypted, but using normal web protocol, uh, HTTPS, but the server can see all your pictures and they're probably stored forever. Uh, and uh, it's really horrible on a lot of, in a lot of ways. Freema, uh, is the only one in the comparison uh, costing money, but it's audited and well documented and it's at least solid cryptography, uh, but it's somewhat uh, limited in features. Uh, and now uh, the worst case is pretty much closed source and closed protocol, so you have no idea what it's doing. It's companies that know how to monetize your data, uh, and most of them are in the USA, and you can't even read what they're transferring as they're usually using uh, some weird protocols. So, uh, yeah, Skype was involved in prison. iMessage uses a really weird binary protocol that hasn't been reversed to the day, so there's no iMessage for Android that's really using the protocol as it's such a weird binary protocol. Uh, and no one, like, really knows all the insights of it uh, and making a messenger limited to one infrastructure of devices probably also stupid. Google Allo, uh, they tried a lot of things, this is the newest one, uh, yeah, also pretty bad. Viber claims to have a lot of users, uh, but you can't even verify your long-term key. Uh, yeah, nope. <laughs> 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 Wicker, somewhat well done, but uh, no insights at all, but they were pretty early with self-destroying messages. And I claim it's still better than Snapchat because it at least is to some extent end-to-end -end encrypted. encrypted. Uh, also important that you should try France, uh, an Austrian product. Multi-messenger pretty much uh, using all the web interfaces, so it will always be compatible. Uh, and yes, like, isn't that important? Uh, all the uh, things we did for you now, uh, popular outside of Europe, especially in the Asian uh, areas, uh, pretty much all horrible, not end to end, sometimes not even client server encrypted, but feature wise, pretty much like Facebook Messenger. So if you have any of them, they are probably the least trustworthy category. Uh, so now the thing I want to tell you, uh, there is no one solution fits all and we should probably consider these factors uh, like ease of use if you want to communicate with your parents who are computer savvy, uh, you probably should use something number based. Uh, if you want pseudonymity, you probably shouldn't use a number based tool as somewhat <coughs> A link to your real physical identity. Uh, if you're sharing some data, for example, with your girlfriend, some pictures or something, you probably should use end-to-end -end encryption. You probably also should use 
self-destroying messages in the case that someone loses their phone, not everyone has your pictures. Uh, you should, if you want to trust in software, you should at least use open software that's also used by some people, uh, so that someone has probably laid their eyes on it. And if you want to whistleblow or something, you should really get in the topic because it's really easy to do it wrong. But use Tor or uh, use PGP in a, uh, in a combination. Uh, and if you have company guidelines, uh, you probably have to switch to something self-hosted. For example, you could even host your own signal server. And uh, to summarize it, this is my last slide. <laughs> I, I will finish. I know I'm a bit over time. Uh, there has been a huge improvement in the last years, like all the popular messengers in the European area are now HTTPS encrypted and most of them are certificate pinned uh, and most uh, big players are now setting on Signal which is verifiable end-to-end to -end encrypted. There are still a lot of horrible uh, solutions and even security people for example use Telegram, please don't. Uh, there are also a lot of good solutions out there, you should probably try. My tips would be Signal, Wire, uh, probably look into Tox, it's really cool and it has nearly the same capabilities as Skype for example. If you like that or if you want to be on the most secure side uh, with the least features, but less features, less place to do it wrong and the source is so small that you can actually read it, is Ricochet, probably also look into that. They're all uh, available in your stores or packet managers. Um, and uh, the long version of all that is hosted on my domain. And uh, now I'd uh, offer you to ask some questions if we still have time. Thank you very much, Michael.